Hello and welcome to Spooky Town Tales, episode 13, Aussie Cryptids. It is me, your host, Morgan, back again for some more spooky tales. And joining me, as per usual, Jamie Bag. Good evening. Welcome back, Jimmy. Can you stop dipping matches in my scented candle, please? No. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot stop. Now that he's finished trimming his nose hairs, we can get on with tonight's episode. I was waiting on you, man. I'm trying to kill. Listeners, gentlemen, all women, those of you that need to trim your nose hairs, how long does it normally take you? <laughs> I'll stop being a turd burger to Jimmy and picking on his nose hairs. Come on, man. They're natural. They're a part of life. It's a lot of work with such a big nose. you just got to go with it. I like your big nose. But speaking of big nose hairy beasts, <laughs> tonight's, <laughs> oh, <good segue. laughs> tonight's episode is Aussie Cryptids and this is part one. We will be doing part two and probably part three and part four because there is a buttload of stuff out there about cryptids. But Aussie Cryptids, I was shocked at how much there actually was. Shit everywhere. Shit everywhere, man. <laughs> And a lot of Aboriginal folklore, That's it's like a giant, big, rolling, just never-ending. Yeah? Yeah. Awesome. And a lot of it can be linked, like they're all tied together. Usually one cryptid will be linked to another cryptid that helps another cryptid. So it's really... They're all related. They're all like tight. They're all a big team. Uh, I wonder cool. if they wear jerseys with like embroidered <laughs> patches on the back. I hope so. I hope so. That'd be pretty great. <laughs> I want one. Anyway... I've, off, I've completely gone off track again. So, are you comfortable, folks? Have you got a drink in hand? Have you dimmed the lights? Good. Now prepare to be spooked. <laughs> <laughs> Ping pong. Ping pong. <laughs> now to start our Aussie Cryptids episode, I thought I would start locally because we've got, in the southwest, we've actually got some very unique stories. Really? Yes, of course. We have, we have all kinds of, of stories. Um, but I'll get, I'm going to just start off with giving you a little bit of interesting local history from our region. Cool. And, and sort of will help you segue into telling you about some Aboriginal folklore behind some of these creatures that people... That would explain what people might be seeing. Excellent. Yeah. Sounds good. So the Donnybrook Bailing Up area was occupied by the Bibblewind tribe, but that wasn't actually the name of the tribe. That's just what the white people referred to. Well, pretty Obviously much. Obviously the Bibblewind. Which it means paper bark. And the reason why they called them that was because their um, mia mias were made, or Miss mia mias, I think, were made of paper bark because around here there was a lot of paper bark. Oh, really? Yep. Yeah. And they would they would make their little huts. So all, all around the Donnybrook area, it was it was ninety nine percent indigenous occupied. Even as even as um close back as nineteen o three, that was still predominantly really? indigenous people here. Mm -hmm. um, and now it's the opposite, which is quite sad. Yeah. So there was active tribes living in this area in the early 1900s, and one of the tribes that was, had their leader, they referred to as King Noble, okay. but that obviously that was what the white settlers called him. Right. Um, and one of the early settlers to the region, the white settlers, Robert P. Coots, actually witnessed him murdering a female member of the tribe. Whoa. In this area. Wow. Um, he chopped her up. And then he buried her in a shallow grave. And there was complete knowledge of this. This apparently was something he was allowed to do. And, Whoa. And being that 
the cultural difference. You don't ask questions? You don't ask questions, you stay out of it. Wow. All right. So there was, they didn't do anything about it. Oof. It was tribal law. So that was around here. So there is a woman. Mm-hmm. Well, there's probably more than one. Yeah. It probably happened more often than not. Um, and there was plenty of murders. Wow. <laughs> there was plenty of murders <laughs> done in the white community as well around here back in those days. There was a whole, there's all these conspiracy theories. Mm-hmm about the road committee that was formed okay. in the town. Because this town had a lot of false starts. Yeah. A lot of things went wrong. But basically, they just knocked a few people off that didn't agree with what they wanted. Well, that's the theory and <laughs> made it look like suicide is just what... keep the, the numbers and your voting side up. There were some weird suicides okay. that... Just For people that weren't suicidal or depressed, just, yeah. oh, he's just walked down drinking arsenic, he's drunk some arsenic under a tree. There's lots of strange stories. He shot himself from 40 feet away. <laughs> yeah, there's all kinds of weird things. And the more I've read into it, the more I've gone, huh, okay. Interesting. So it was a bit of a spooky, weird place, which, I mean, most people moving to Donnybrook, now you'd go, this place is pretty dull, it's pretty yeah. boring, there is not a lot going on here. It's not, you wouldn't expect that much excitement. No. So we had, there was quite a, a crazy kind of start to Donnybrook. Right. But anyway, so along those lines of what, why I've given you a bit of history is that we, in this area, have had multiple sightings of what Aussies call a Yowie. Okay. And we've had other sightings a little bit further south of a creature, a smaller creature, mm. that resembles more of a monkey. Okay. In the woods or in the bush further south. Bush so, monkeys. Bush monkeys. <laughs> so the initial, one of the first ones I read about took place out on Goodwood Road, which I mentioned before. Yes. Uh, that one was quite large and had sort of Albany yeah. hair. The other ones that people have seen are out towards, uh, there's been two sightings of it, one closer to Donnybrook, one more towards Boyup Brook. But on the Boy Up Brook Road, but it, it yeah. was basically the identical view, sightings. Same, the description, same, yeah, same description, was very much the same. Um, that one was large and had black, sort of blackish hair, and actually had like glowing red eyes. Ooh. And yeah, the description it sort of emerged out the side along the side of the road, and then one of the people that experienced it, it actually leapt over the top of the car. Whoa. And then ran off down off to the right of the car. So it's they've pulled over to stop because they've yeah, seen yeah. this thing coming out from the left hand side of the bush. It looked injured apparently, yeah. but it was so large that it could leap over the top of the car. And it looked human human like, but was hairy and about ten feet tall. Whoa! Imagine seeing That's that. That's crazy. And they were coming back from the Boy Up Brook Country Music Festival. Okay. Yeah. Heading back towards, I believe they were heading towards Greenbushes Way. Yeah, I don't know. Like down, that was where they were yeah. going yep. home to. And they saw this thing. And another person, a friend of theirs, had seen it closer to the Donnybrook exit. Really? Yep. Coming out of the bush. So it's pretty close to home. Yeah, that is. Pretty friggin' creepy. So continuing on with the whole, yeah, what they, we call them yowies in yeah. Australia. But those of you who might be listening who are from another country, in the US they're known as Bigfoots. Yep. There's um, Sasquatch. Sasquatch, Yetis, Yetis all kinds of names. The uh, In New Zealand they're referred to as Mohau, Mohau, or, mm. ma- or Matau. I can't really pronounce that properly. I no. apologise, any Kiwis listening? But um, basically these, there are creatures seen worldwide. Mm. Most continents have... Something a like large, sort of hairy, humanoid creature that's been witnessed from the dawn of time. Yep. Documented in the history books, documented in, in modern history, people experiencing strange, a lot of correlating stories. So yeah. usually throwing rocks. They usually throw things. Really? Um, they howl. They're usually really stinky. Yeah. Like you usually smell them before you see them. Really? Um you, there's so many things that match up for all the different... All, all the same, yeah. same thing. So the Aussie, it's our basically it's our giant ape or our Bigfoot is, is the Yowie. And it's a bipe, bipedal gorilla who lives in the wilderness areas. Um, 
It's the term Yowie is also used for legendary Aboriginal animal, which is not an ape, uh, which causes some confusion. No, okay. So I didn't know that. Um, the Aboriginal Yowie is thought to to be a regional name for the Bunyip. Yeah. So in the that, bun- Bunyip, something that's more of a water creature. Yeah, more of a. Well, to my what I was told was that it was more of something that lived around billabongs and all that sort of thing. It was more. And it dragged people, like drowned people, yeah. from what I was told growing up yep. as a kid. So, yes, yeah, so that basically there's so many different versions of. A very similar thing. Yeah, and I did hear a pretty cool description of the Dreamtime, because there's even a Dreamtime story about Bigfoot. Or the Yowie. So I've tracked that down for you. I'm going to read it out to you. I apologise for if I've pronounced things wrong. Um, but this one comes from uh, Wungabung Land. Wungabung. I've probably said that wrong already. Um, and basically it's the, it's called the, hair, the Hairy Man. They call okay. him the Hairy Man. And yep. that's the uh, Wajuran people. Um, they also call him Yindi Yindi. Okay. So that's their name. So... Mm. Yindi Yindi is their name for for the Bigfoot or Hairy Man. Um, basically, European settlers had had... There's documented cases of European settlers in that area in Wunga, <laughs> Wungabong yeah. land. Sorry yeah. if I've said that wrong. Um, there's, but yeah, both European and Indigenous people have experienced this... Really? ...for a long time. It's just... Com- it's part of their culture they grew up with yeah, in this yeah. area. And yeah, they, they get taught about... The hairy man or Yindi Yindi. So it's something, it's one of the stories they're told about, like a, like a cautionary tale. Yeah. So most Aboriginal tribes feared yeah. Yindi Yindi. It's just something that, that you, were, you were told about. So here is the Dreamtime story about the hairy man or the Yowie or the Bigfoot or yep. the Yindi Yindi. So this is what, this is, a, you know, this is as far back. It goes this far back. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So in the dream time, a man called Wajaba, Wanjaba went walking through the Blue Mountains looking for food for his people. He saw a red-bellied black sitting on a rock, and as he got closer to kill the snake, he heard a shout from across the river. There stood a large man with a roost skin on and two knives in his hands. The red-bellied black crawled off. I saw it first, Wajabi said. I didn't want to eat it anyway. The large man said, no matter, I'll eat you instead. Uh. Wanjaba bolted away, told his tribe about this scary man. So he was huge, apparently. Big man. The elder said to go west and talk to the kangaroo spirit, which he did. Now, the kangaroo spirit warned that this creature, or Gindi Gindi, was never satisfied and he killed for fun. Wunjabi agreed to hunt him down and destroy him with fear for his people. Basically, if he's in the area, he's going to kill everybody. When he returned to his camp, the whole tribe was dead. Whoa. So this this, uh, Gindi Gindi had been, or Gindi Gindi, had been and um, killed the whole camp. So he went looking for him, found a cave full of bones and pelts where he hid and watched watched him eat red belly black snakes. Okay. Which aren't good eating, apparently. They're not really... Oh, okay. You'd only eat them if you are desperate. When Jabba clubbed him and then bound him with the snakes and hung him from the, the cave with a boulder, so he'd tie the boulder to his hands and tied his feet to the top of the cave uh-huh. so he would stretch. Uh-huh. So he, but then he set him on fire. So Wanjaba then left, assuming that Giddy Giddy was going to die. Yeah, yeah. He didn't die, though. The fur on his back fused to his skin. His arms and legs stretched from the pressure of the boulder. Okay. The knives he held became his teeth, and that's how Giddy Giddy was formed. Well, there you go. So that is the folklore behind the Australian Bigfoot. Well, there you go. Yeah, pretty cool story. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. So basically there have been reports to, to as a segue, in 
the northern part of Queensland, there have been two very recent encounters with Bigfoot creatures. Really? Yeah. Whoa. Yep. As recent as 2003. So I'm going to read them for you now. So in Tazali, the, Tazali, the tablelands in Queensland, for 11 months straight, a woman who lived there claimed that she was visited by two different Bigfoot-like creatures. Whoa. She also claimed they left her gifts. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So, I mean, at first you go, what a nut bar. But then yeah. when you actually read her encounter, you kind of go, oh, that's a bit weird. Yeah. So she claims that there was one that she saw that had an athletic black figure with muscular arms, dark hollow eyes. And when she saw that one, she had an instant feeling, bad feeling. Like, well, this, yeah. this means harm. Yeah. Um, so she had a niece moved in and... Well, while she was living there, the niece had woken up one day to f- see a black silhouette, massive figure standing in the, at the bedroom window, looking in from the veranda. Mm-hmm. And she was so scared she couldn't move and didn't scream. She was just scared to draw any attention to herself. Yeah. yeah. She said after a few minutes, it obviously moved away. Mm-hmm. Um, now, after she eventually did tell the auntie, obviously once it had gone, later that day had said, I saw this thing. So the auntie convinced, you know, wanting to protect the, the, the yeah. kids yeah. would sit on the veranda till 2am with a plank of wood that had a screw sticking out <laughs> one end just in case it came back Whoa. when she called the landlord to ask if there'd ever been any weird you know could you explain this what should I do yeah. they said to call the cops but when she called the cops they were you know they obviously, said hard you, to just, you can them. just and then obviously she said they'd always run off and hide in the bush like when you looked for them, you could never find you them. Never find so she'd just look like a nut bar to ah. the police. Um, she's attempted to film them, but said that the cameras always would film them as black, which I've heard of many occasions, um, cameras malfunctioning, or when you go back to review footage, it's, it's all distorted. Yeah. But she did get an audio clipping, which I will play for oh, you really? now. Oh, cool. So this is what she recorded near the creek, having followed one of these creatures. So here you go. Tell me what you think. You'll first you'll hear the deeper bark noise is the creature, and then you'll hear her dogs barking at it just after. It's definitely weird. It's weird. It's not a dog. No. Because you hear the dog at the end. So it's a strange thing. And, and it's even a if it was a, a different dog or anything else, it it's would sound really, like a dog. Yeah, that's like really. Guttural. It's guttural. 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 Yeah, that's a very good description. Yeah. It's, it's more. There's more to it than a dog's bark. Now, she encountered these things so often that she would even try and lure them with food and feed them. <laughs> So she'd leave like little offerings or little traps. I don't know if that's a good idea. So she tried with them. Well, I suppose she's like, it's better they eat that than me. True. So she's left out meat and fruit for them, which they never took, but she could see that they'd been around it because there'd be footprints, very large footprints and markings, like tracking. She'd be able to see that they'd been, had a look, picked it up, put it down. That's pretty cool. You could see it had been moved. Um, then she'd moved out in 20, uh, 2006, 16, because she, she was just fed up of being worried for her and the kids' safety. Yeah. yeah. So they, they moved out. Um, but she did send her audio tape to a paranormal yeah. group who study yaois and all kinds of things, yeah. who have been out to investigate it and claim that they've been out 30 times and 20 out of 30 times have seen them. That's a pretty good hit ratio. Yeah, or heard them. And he reckons apparently if you stand out there, you can hear, especially at night, you hear them moving around. But when you shine the light on the sound, you never see them. Like oh, okay. they just seem to be invisible, which is another thing I've heard about Bigfoots. They're the very similar, are they? they yeah, they... that people who go out looking for them, you can hear them right next to you, like loud footprints, and you turn the light and there's never you can't actually see anything. Whether or not it's just bush noises and small creatures in the undergrowth and it sounds yeah, like feet yeah. and then you're turning around because you're, it's dark, you're, you're, your you're out there. your senses are already high. And you're out there looking for it. Yeah. You're going to yep. think every sound is one of them. Yeah. 
But I, what I'm meaning is I'm not saying that I believe it. I'm just saying that I've heard other people who have been out looking for these creatures who have had similar experiences. Yeah. So whether or not it is just that whole hysteria of being out in the night looking for monsters, that every sound when it is dark, especially in remote areas. Yeah, when you've got no other background noise. The tiniest little bug can make quite a cacophony. Yeah. <laughs> what? <that> <laughs> It's a very descriptive word. Well, it can make that. a loud, like a, a chaotic, loud yeah. noise. It can it can create quite a large sound. For a small animal. If yeah. you're in a, a remote area. So, uh, I mean, tell me what you think. Does it sound like a Bigfoot to you? Do you believe this woman? Now, this next one, like, you've just got to go off her, basically. You know, I always take those ones with a pinch of salt. Yeah, it's yeah. just her eyewitness. There's no actual concrete evidence there. Um, there was this other one that I found that was in the Gold Coast as well, in the hinterland. Okay. This one I find a little bit harder to explain. Right. Because of when it happened and who it happened to. Okay. So this was on Beachmont Road in the Gold Coast hinterland, and it was November 13th. It was 10 a.m. in the morning. A truck driver was taking a load up the highway, yep. or up the road, uh, he was rounding a bend when he saw something falling out the corner of his eye. So his peripheral vision is like, crap, that's big. Yeah. You know. Um, he knew it was the falling object was a rock. So I think in that area, obviously, it's maybe it's a rocky area. Yeah. Right. And so he's aware of dangers. Obviously, he's alert. He knows to slam the brakes on, which he did. Yep. Assuming it was a big boulder. Avalanche risk area. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Something maybe. Of sort. So he's put the brakes on. Um, cause he didn't want to hit the rock. Yeah. It was a large rock. Makes sense. Um, so when he hit the, so this is his quote, I've hit the brakes to stop so I didn't hit the rock, but then it stood up. Whoa. It wasn't a rock at all. <laughs> so this poor truck driver is like, shit, thinking he's going to hit a boulder. Then the rock stood up. Well, as long as it gets out of the way, I suppose. Instead, he described, yeah, just get out of the way. I've got a load to drop off. So instead, this thing stood up and it was a beast about 10 foot tall, he's described, and it was as big as his truck. Whoa. It was hairy. He could see the navel though. So there were sections of it like he could see flesh through yeah. that was thinned out around the stomach area. Whoa. He reckoned that there was two inch hair all over the body, but from his lips to its eyebrows, there was no hair. And it was like a round face like a chimp. Mm. A massive big head. The eyes were dark. It was this close because it was looking straight in the window at him. Yeah, yeah. He described the eyes as having black pupils with a very light hazel ring around them. Oh, really? So he got proper, proper close-up close. view of this thing. Well, he'd nearly hit it, I suppose. Yeah. Probably would have had pretty big eyes at yeah. the time. <laughs> I love this, though. I love this description. It had a flat nose like a boxer. <laughs> Its ears were hairless. Its head looked like it was growing out of its chest, not its shoulders. <laughs> and he said it looked shocked. Yeah. And then it looked embarrassed. And then it got angry. Whoa. So it's gone, oh, yeah. and then, oh, shit, I'm embarrassed. And then, it, then it's gone, oh, I'm angry because you really hurt me with your child. How dare you? So this poor thing is having every single emotion. <laughs> and Meanwhile, the child started crying. Yeah. And then it, then, it's, <laughs> then it asked for ice cream. But, yeah, but he, he That's just. That's so crazy. He just was completely like, what in the hell? Now that we've started with the Bigfoots and Yowies, mm. we're going to bring it back to the southwest again. Right. And we're going to talk about a very popular cryptid, the Nanup Tiger. Ooh, heard about this one. Now, yes, the Nanup Tiger is said to live in the southwest region. Nanup um, mainly. <laughs> actually more so spotted in the Bustleton area. <sighs> Sorry, Jimmy. She called it the Bustleton Tiger. Bustleton Tiger, I know. <laughs> what the hell, man? <laughs> Apparently there, there's been the hot spots for viewing, or if you would like to see the so-called Nanup Tiger, the best spots to view it are Bustleton. How do you say that, Jimmy? Yungaralup. That looks pretty good. Margaret River. Yep. And Nanup. So mm, they're the nice. main areas if you want to see this thing, but apparently it's been spotted. Yeah. There's been hundreds of sightings throughout time, but there's been at least 50 
of the recent ones in Bustleton. Really? In the, in the Bustleton area. Mostly occurring around the Vass Highway, Queen Elizabeth Drive, Whoa. and Jindong. Really? Yeah, so they're very popular spots to have seen the so Mount Tiger. reasonably populated areas. Yes, too. well, this is the thing. A lot of people that have said they've seen them, it's like on the edge of the highway and on the edge of the road in, at night when they're night driving, and yeah. they've gone, what animal is that? Is that a fox? And it's That's got stripes on its back. Totally crazy. Yeah. So there is a nationwide group dedicated to research rec- and recognition and all this sort of thing. Um, and the conservation of thy- the thylacines. So they believe we've got a variety of thylacines oh, okay. living here that's not been picked up by... Picked up, yet. yeah. Yeah. There are considerable amounts smaller than the Tasmanian oh, tiger, okay. apparently, from what... Like from basically from what people have... From the, all the encounters, they've sort of estimated the size yeah. of them. And apparently they're a lot smaller. So more of like a fox-sized... Or a massive possum. Or a giant <laughs> striped possum <laughs> with really sharp teeth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so apparently there is a, a lady who does spend most of her weekends going out with cameras looking huh? for the nanoptite. She's pretty into it. Fair enough. Um from what they've observed, the ones here are nocturnal. Oh, okay. Yeah. They're very quiet and inquisitive, but they're also quite curious. Mm. So they always say, the people that see them always say that the animal, if they saw a person or a car, they would wait and watch to see what happened next and wouldn't necessarily make themselves noticed. Oh, okay. Wouldn't draw attention to them. So they kind of would just stop and observe and just, ooh, a bit suspicious. Mm. Um yeah, so they, they've there's been a fair few spotted in the Nanup area as well. So those of you that don't know what a thylacine is, um, it's a, a large carnivorous marsupial that is now believed to be extinct, uh, or a Tasmanian tiger. Yeah. So it was also referred to as a Tasmanian wolf. They were sandy yellowish brown to grey in colour. Mm-hmm. They would usually have from 15 to 20 dark stripes across the back from the shoulders to the tail had a large dog-like head, and the tail was stiff and the legs were relatively uh, short. Body hair was dense, um, it had short ears that were sort of stood upright, and the jaws were very large and powerful. Mm. Um, the thylacine males were usually larger than the females, and the females had a back-opening pouch. So they had a pouch. Oh, okay. Yeah. So um, the litter was usually up to four, four young. Yep. They, they were dependent on their mum until they were half grown. Wow. Interestingly, the males had a back opening partial pouch. A partial pouch. A partial pouch. <laughs> a half the, pouch. Had their own baby had, belly. Had a baby belly. <laughs> just like human men, they get pregnant when their wives get pregnant. They mm. just don't talk about it. That's true. There's no attention when they're not taught about losing their baby bodies. Yeah, no, just ignore it. It'll go away. No, it didn't happen. No, No. I've still got mine. Now, the reason we (laughs) do not... I keep my stuff out on my keys or wallet. Your donuts (laughs) or the biscuits you steal out the biscuit (laughs) jar. Although the precise precise reason for the um, thylacine, the extinction of the thylacine from the mainland of Australia, it's not really known. Um, The main theory is... Competition with dingoes, uh-huh. hunting by humans, um, but the, obviously the ones in Tasmania, it was people's fault. Yeah, because people are shitheads. <laughs> it's true. They wiped them out, believing they were a pest, and then sure enough, oh no, that was the last one. <laughs> Shouldn't we have been keeping track, Philip? Yeah, we probably should have. Anyway, there's been fossils of thylacines found in Victoria, South Australia, Western Australia, and Queensland. Wow. So they were everywhere in Australia. Yeah, yeah. At some stage, we did have some over here our own that. our own tiger, um, but yeah, it did get shame. wiped out. Yeah, there were footprints found fossilized in the Jewel Cave. Oh, cool. Down south in yeah. Augusta, is that Augusta? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Near Augusta. So there is a Tas- There was a Tasmanian tiger skeleton discovered in June of 1960. Um, and at this stage, it's the youngest dated Tasmanian tiger in WA is a specimen from the Murra L. Elvin cave, which is in the Nullarbor. Oh, cool. And that was dated around 3,200 to 3,400 years old. Wow. 
So it's very old. It is. So that's a young one. Now, here's where I get a little bit sceptical, sciencey. Mm. If they've only found that one skeleton, yeah, in the Nullarbor, in a cave, and yes, they found footprints in the jewel cave. Yeah. If we had thylacines, even Cruising a smaller variety, then we would have found skeletons by now. True. But would you take notice of them that because of being so small, a smaller version? They'd right? still have large teeth. True. And you know, anyone. That's a savage looking possum. Anyone <laughs> coming across a, any kind of skeleton, I don't know if it's just me. Yeah, no, most you people would. have a good look and go, oh, what animal's that? And yeah, you have a good look at the structure true. of it. If it even resembled a cat or a dog, you'd be a bit, you'd be, oh shit, yeah. someone's dog or cats. Yeah. That makes me kind of go. He's got a funny looking back patch. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> what kind of dog breed's that? <laughs> Yeah, I, as the sceptic in I me believe. goes, yeah, no, that's... So the scien scientific, I mean, here we are talking about Bigfoots and I'm pulling apart the palace. Yeah. yeah. But then I never said Come I on. believed, I never said I believed Bigfoots were here. I'm just saying this is what people have said. Fair enough. So I'm very much sceptical, but I do like to talk about this stuff because it interests me. Yeah, absolutely. But I do think if there were thylacines around, we would have found Something. evidence of them. Yeah. And most of the sightings people have are at night time. True. And then it's hard to gauge what you're looking at at night time. When you are driving your car, yep. you have your headlights on. Yep. Your vision is focused on the white lines and your headlights. Generally, if you see a creature, it's for a split second and your eyes are just making up half the details. Yeah, yep. That's the science behind night vision. We see a snippet of something, we rebuild the rest from... What memory, memory or what, or what we think we saw. So they could be seeing feral cats. And plus stripes foxes, would be an interesting thing because rib cages and things like rib that. Rib cages, could... plants. Yeah. And and people could just be getting carried away and going, oh, I don't recognise that animal, it must have been. Because people are aware of this legend. Yeah. Yep. People are aware the of... The same thing, you could construct it. You can totally construct You could be persuaded by the fact that people know... Or people have said they've seen this thing around. Yeah. So seeing a fox. I mean, a lot of people haven't seen a fox at night time. I was shocked at the different colour range of foxes. True. I saw one in our garden mm. that was massive and yeah. it was very pale coloured. I thought it, they'd all be orange or brown, but this was a very pale yeah. coloured fox. But it was definitely a fox. But at first glance, I thought, what the fuck is that? Yeah. yeah. Then I realised the bushy tail and realised it was over by the chook pen. It's a fox. Interestingly, though, it's foxes have become so nonchalant lately, and 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 that's sort of does fall into the hole when you it doesn't run off straight away. Yes. As well, and I mean that's you know, and around that size as well, because foxes vary a lot in size. Not to mention, they're all saying they're a lot smaller than. Your traditional thylacine, yeah. which would indicate they're foxes. They're about that size. I think it's foxes, personally. It, they are common as muck. Yeah. And they're... you're going to see them in You see them all the time. In Bustleton, at the pub, they're everywhere. They're at the pub. <laughs> at the pub. At the pub. You're going to see them. So, prove me wrong. If anyone out there has seen a strange Tasmanian tiger-looking creature in the southwest region, predominantly in Bustleton or the Vass area. I would love to hear from you. I want you to prove me wrong. I want you to send me your stories because at the moment I'm thinking people are seeing foxes and just getting confused. Especially if it's night time. It, yeah. it is so much harder to gauge. Yep. Yeah. Okay, moving on to something a bit more hard to explain. We're going to stay in the realms of sightings of large hairy creatures mm -hmm. but we're talking black panthers oh the next step up next step up now this one i can't really explain away so what what i find crazy about the black panther story is the more i've read into it the more it seems plausible yeah whereas i thought the more i'd read about it the more i like i did with thylacines i go poo poo I haven't read a lot about it, so I'm still in the poo-poo section. Okay, the poo-poo section. All right, so I have heard stories of them here in Western Australia. Again, yep. probably just hearsay and folklore, but 
that's something that my darling Anna and I are going to look into for you for the sightings that have been seen in the southwest region. Fair enough. Because there's also been hearsay of them in the wheat belt. Yeah. These large cats that are attacking livestock. So she thinks she's got a lead down there, which just sounds pretty cool. So I'm hoping we can figure out. Road trip. Road trip. Go check We're going to figure out whether people have been seeing them down here. Because when I first moved to Donnybrook, I heard that there were yeah. farmers who had had experiences with them. Close to here. Close to here. Yeah. So I know that people claim to have seen them, which brings me to actual documented evidence of these cats in New South Wales. So in the Gippsland area. Mm -hmm. I believe that's New South Wales. Correct me if I'm wrong. I do a lot of research. I've got a ton of notes in front of me. I am going to stuff up from time to time. And if I do, please let me know because that's the only way I'm going to know. Because after this episode's done, this goes in my binder (laughs) and I start the next week's one. (laughs) So in Sydney, along the eastern coastline, People have been finding gutted cows and sheep carcasses dragged up trees. Really? They've been finding them in trees. So like six, seven, eight feet up jammed in trees. Mm. Right? There have been thousands of people have claimed to see large black cats in this area. Not just one or two. On top of that, there are massive scratch marks in trees, mm. which is quite common with your big cats. Big cats, yeah. Leaving scratchings on trees, usually around the trees where they found Carcass. carcasses. Carcasses. So it's one thing. Up t- trees is a very big cat thing. It's ve- it's a that's, leopard that's, thing. Yeah, yeah big It's cock. a leopard or a, yeah panther thing. More of a leopard thing. Yeah. Um. So that was one big like what so yeah. there've been this, there's been sightings of these things and then it got to a point where like even the cattle had massive scratch marks all over them mm-hmm. this this farmer's cattle but the cows and the sheep dragged sorry 10 meters up trees that's a long way up. so that's higher than i thought that's a long way up that's a long like most trees aren't much no. more than that so they have found they found some of them up that high which, which because of this, because park rangers yeah. found them, they actually issued a federal investigation in 1999. Fair enough. And the bloke they got in to, do, to carry out this investigation was Johan Bauer, mm-hmm. who he's done a lot of work in China and Nepal with large predatory leopards. Okay. So he's an expert, basically, on the subject of yeah. large cats. So this bloke, Johan, confirmed from what he saw of the scratchings and he, he witnessed, he found paw prints, he found hair, he found all kinds of things, that yeah. it was the behaviour of a large feline predator. Yeah. yeah. And he thinks it's a leopard, not so much a panther, whereas, I mean, people call it the panther. Yeah. Um, he strongly believes that it's a leopard. Yeah. That is, that, or, or leopards that are over there. Now... I know people go, what? Why haven't we seen them? Where yeah, did they yeah. come from? How can they be leopards? And there's all sorts of stories, like along the lines of um, mas- a mascot from a US serviceman was yeah. one of them, or yeah. mascots, because they did bring cats, like they did, yeah. um, and then let them go when the war, war yeah. finished. And the runaway from the circus is always a good one. Yeah, there's a theory that they've come over in Indonesian fishing boats, like people have brought them over. Okay. There's more, uh, but the most plausible one that people think is highly true is there are a lot of people with private zoos. A lot of very wealthy people that have private zoos. Um, and back in the oldie, oldie days, the early days of Australia, there were a lot of people wanting importing exotic animals. And there were a large number of animal transport accidents in that area. And missing animals went missing all the time. Yeah. This yeah. is back in the 20s. Yeah. And you had your travelling circuses were very, very popular. Yeah. yeah. Same deal. They had large cats all the time, yeah, apparently. Everything. Apparently there was tons of... I mean, given the, the area, 
yeah. and the way animals were transported, there are count there are many cases of an, large cats going missing when yeah. when there's been overturned an accident yeah. on the road of some yeah in Australia. So that is highly plausible that a ton of them got out and made babies and yeah, don't have like savage ostriches or anything like that cruising around. They like escape from the circus ones. See the thing is, in <laughs> Queensland. Yeah. The reason why these things maybe haven't flourished so much is you've got the scariest living dinosaurs ever living there. Well, that's true. You've got Casa Bloody Worries. Yeah. That's maybe what I'm having. scared of Casa Worries. I'm more scared of Casa Worries than I am of Bigfoot. <laughs> and leopards. And leopards. <laughs> I could take a leopard. I wouldn't I wouldn't fuck with a Casa No. It's not I don't quite thing. know how you'd beat one. Just because it's a big chook. It's, but it's just, it's got a head bangy thing. It's got a pokey beak thing. It's got the big sharp fuck off claws. All, all stabby at the front. It's stabby everywhere. I don't, I don't know where to start. I mean, unless you jump sideways and took out the middle, the soft bit. You'd be like one of those plain donut cushions and just yeah, go for the middle. Yeah, go for the right? middle. I don't know. <laughs> A leopard, I know they've got claws and fangs and stuff, but then once they've Total got you, 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 can, you can go for the eyeballs or <laughs> punch the ribs or something. I don't know. It'd be interesting to watch you take them. <laughs> That's <a> worry. <laughs> any, 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 any animal. Any animal. Yeah. This is what I think about it. I'm like, now how would I? Yeah. I quite, I used to do it as a kid. I'd think about different types of sharks. And you wonder where our children are. <laughs> oh, my God. Anyway. <laughs> Now, one of the last ones I'm going to talk about tonight, because I'm totally running out of time. There's so much to get through. <sighs> going to leave some for That's why the it's next. Part one. This is why it's part one, folks, and why it's completely higgledy biggledy. Because I have far too many notes, and I'm just rifling through them like a mother lecker. <laughs> so, this one I read about. I'd never heard of it before. I was like, that is some fucked up shit. Yeah. And you think, you know, people are always, oh, like the US cryptids are so, because they've got like the Jersey Devil and the yeah. Goat Man. And... Ours are worse. Aussie ones, I've just scratched the surface tonight, folks. We have so many Aboriginal folklore creatures yeah. that, my God. Just keep rolling. Freaking terrifying. Way worse than the American ones. Okay. And the European ones. To, for example, okay. Have you ever heard of Yaramai Yahoo? No. Or, not. or people eaters? Whoa. Okay. We have to the people top. eaters. <laughs> In Aboriginal culture, the Yaramai Yahoo was a little red man, about four feet tall, with a large head and mouth. He had no teeth and swallowed his food whole. Oh. The tips of his fingers and toes were shaped like the suckers of an octopus. Whoa, gross. These creatures lived at the top of wild fig trees. Now, do you have a fig tree on your property? Uh, a lot of people Because if you do, <laughs> sucked in. Whoa. It would capture their prey by dropping on unsuspected passers-by who sought shelter in the tree. When a person camped below a fig tree... A Yarama Yahu would jump on top of the person, drain their blood with their hands and their feet. Their victims rarely died from the initial encounter, but because the person was left weak in a helpless state, the Yarama Yuhu would return later and swallow the victim. It then drank water and took a nap. When it awoke, it would regurgitate the undigested portion of its meal, which, if the meal was a person, that person would still be alive. Whoa. That's pretty creepy. Do you want to know how to become a Yara Ma Yara Ma Yahoo? Oh, I could put it on my resume. Yeah, sure. Children were told that if they're unfortunate enough to meet a Yara Ma Yahoo, they should offer no resistance. <laughs> as their chances of survival would be better if they let the creature swallow them. Wow. If a person was captured on several different occasions, they would grow shorter with each occasion until they were the same size as a Yarama Yahoo and they would grow hair all over their body, eventually becoming a Yarama Yahoo themselves. Wow. Imagine hearing that growing up. You'd oh, never go near a fig tree. No. You'd have a complete phobia of figs. Oh my God. So that's another Aussie one. 
hope you have a good sleep tonight, folks. <laughs> Do you have do you have a fig farm? Then you're fucked. Yeah, you're screwed. You just, just <laughs> little red little sleep. red men living in the tops of your trees <laughs> with no teeth and sucker hands and feet. Ew! Don't um, make that Genya. noise. <laughs> don't. I don't like it. So there you go. Now, to wrap up tonight, mm. as we've talked a lot about Aboriginal folklore. I thought it only fitting that I offer you a little bit of advice from the old fellas. Yep. Now, if you ever hear phantom cries when you're out camping, yeah. you never, ever, ever leave the circle of firelight. Okay. Okay? This is, this is good advice, so listen. Basically, in an Aussie bush, yeah. so it goes, it's filled with these cryptid spirit creatures mm-hmm. in Aboriginal folklore. Full, absolutely full of them. They work together as a team, apparently. So the giddy giddy bird cries out like a baby or mimics a friend's voice. Right. This is another one I've heard so many stories of. So it might mimic a friend that's gone to take a leak. Mm-hmm. Mate, come look at this. This is where these stories, so many of these stories, you should look them up, folks. Yeah. So the giddy giddy bird lures you out by copying your friend's voice or a loved one's voice. Then the bullyards, which are the little hairy people, will capture you and bring you to the wheelo, which is the bringer of death. Whoa. This is why the old fellas say, stay within the ring of fire. Whoa. Don't leave your camp the firelight or you'll get captured by a team a of creepy team. cryptids. Working together. Team of bad dudes. They're going to steal your soul. They're going to bring you death. So there you go. Bit of a bit of tip for you guys. If you're out <laughs> camping, if you hear someone calling you and they're sitting next to you, maybe don't go looking for them. Makes sense. Yeah. Just sit there and talk to them. Just, just don't do it. Now, before we say goodbye this evening... Jimmy and I want to give you a bit of a hot tip for something we've discovered, which I'd heard of skinwalkers before, but there is a pretty cool... There's a ranch. There's a ranch. Skinwalker Ranch. Now, if you're into this stuff and you want to seriously just like a what the actual heck fire shit, look it up. Yeah, it's part of the bedtime stories thing on YouTube. Yeah, if you jump on YouTube, just search Skinwalker Ranch. Yeah. There's part one and part two. Part one and part two, but there's also a documentary that's come out. There's a movie. I think it's part of a mo- like it's done as a film. Yeah. So that's come. That is out. I think that was last. And year. that's the same guy that's done the Bob Lazar documentary has been involved in the in, Skinwalker Ranch. He one. wrote the book which they did the movie on. Yeah. Yeah. So check it out. Jump online. Search up Skinwalker Ranch. You will not be disappointed. It's freaking crazy. I'm about to start the book tonight. I can't wait. I'm going to start reading it. I'll probably smash it out tonight. I probably won't sleep. <laughs> it's a pretty interesting story whether or not, I mean, always take it with a pinch of salt. Everything. That's what I always say, guys. Take it with a pinch of salt. But even as just as a story. It's entertaining. It's really entertaining. And you kind of like, what the hell? Mm-hmm. And so much ties into a lot of stuff I've read on here that we, that people have experienced in our own little area with strange creatures and weird lights. Just It's strange. Nuts. It's, it's just nuts. strange. So check that out, folks. And if you've enjoyed tonight's episode and you've had your own cryptid experience, yeah, please, please write to me. I want to hear your stories. And be sure to share the show with anyone that you think will like this kind of weird, kooky stuff. And we may be taking a short break depending on our situation. We've got a lot going on. We'll punch through, but we'll see where we we'll end up. We'll see where we end up. We might have to have the odd week off here and there, but I will give you notice if that's the case. Yep. Don't want to leave you hanging. But we're definitely, definitely, definitely going to be back in October if we do take some time off because October's the spookiest month of the year and I'm going to bring you some freaking cool stories. It's my favourite. October's the best month. So... Make sure you tune in next week. Hopefully we should be back with another episode. If you want to hear another episode, let me know. If you're bored of us, that's cool too. Don't let us know. Don't let us know. Don't hurt my feelings. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, take it easy, folks, and have a spooky weekend. This is Morgan. And Jimmy. Stay spooky.
Bye. Bye.